Chapter 44 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 44. Let us press on to perfection. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. Wherefore, let us cease to speak of the first principles of Christ, and press on unto perfection, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of the teaching of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. We have seen how among the Hebrews there were two classes of Christians. They are to be found in every Christian church, some who, instead of growing up to be teachers and helpers of others, always remain babes, and have need that someone again teach them the rudiments of the beginning of the oracles of God. Others who are perfect or fully grown men, who have had their spiritual senses exercised in discerning good and evil, and are able to receive the solid food of the knowledge of the perfection of Christ and his work. Let us listen as the word calls us to come out of all sloth and feebleness, and to press on to the perfection Christ has come to reveal. First we hear what it is we are to give up. Let us leave the word of the beginning of Christ. In chapter 3 verse 14 we were urged to hold fast the beginning firm unto the end. These two expressions are not at variance. The beginning is the seed or first principle out of which the farther life must grow and expand into perfection. This beginning, as the root of all that is to come, must be held fast to the very end. But the beginning, as being only a commencement of something better, must be left. It is a terrible misunderstanding of the words, hold fast what thou hast, to imagine that we simply need to preserve what we already have. By no means. We must realize that the knowledge of Christ and the measure of grace we receive at conversion cannot suffice for our farther life. We need each day to learn more of Christ, to make new advances in obedience, to gain larger experience of the power of the heavenly life. There can be no healthy life without growth and progress. We must leave the word of the beginning of Christ. Not laying again the foundation. A builder, when he has laid his foundation, leaves working at it any more and builds upon it. There are Christians who never get beyond the foundation, who never know what the house is for the sake of which alone the foundation is, what it is to be an habitation of God through the Spirit and to dwell in the love and the power of God. The writer mentions in three pairs six points which belong to the foundation truths in which the young beginner has to be instructed. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. These are in very deed only the rudiments of the word of Christ. Then follow two points that have reference to the public confession of faith and the connection with the church, the teaching of baptism and of the laying on of hands and then two more that relate to the future life, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Without these elementary truths one could hardly be a Christian, but the man who rests content with them and cares not to know more cannot be a Christian as God would have him, has reason to doubt whether he be a Christian at all. Wherefore let us leave the word of the beginning of Christ and press on unto perfection. It is not difficult to know what perfection here means. Perfect is that which corresponds to its ideal, which is as it should be, which answers to what its maker intended. No parent is content that his child should remain a babe. He educates it to be a full-grown man. God has set before us in his word the life he actually means us to live, and he calls every true child of his to leave the beginnings and press on to perfection, to press on to be all that he has promised to make us. More God would not have us seek. With less we dare not be content, lest we deceive ourselves. In Christ Jesus and his life on earth we have the embodiment of that perfection, as it consists in a life given up to obedience to God's will. 
the proof that it is possible for a true man to live a life that is well-pleasing to the Father, the promise that from his throne in heaven he will now impart and work in us. In suffering he yielded himself to God to perfect him. In suffering he learned obedience and was made perfect, thereby to be the cause of eternal salvation to us. He is now, as the Son perfected for evermore, our High Priest, in heaven working in us, in the power of the heavenly life, that perfection through which, as our leader, he opened the path to glory. Our perfection can be none other than Christ's, his perfection our model, his perfection our life and strength. God desires and can be satisfied with nothing in us but what he sees of his beloved Son and his perfection through suffering and obedience. Wherefore, let us leave the word of the beginning of Christ and press on to perfection. And this will we do if God permit. As if he says, the following chapters are to be the teaching of Christian perfection. We will with you press on and help you on by giving the solid food which is the nourishment and strength of the perfect, the heavenly priesthood of Christ in the power of an endless life. His glory and power as mediator of the new covenant, writing God's law into our very heart, the infinite efficacy of the blood as opening the holiest of all to us and cleansing us to enter in and serve the living God. These and such like truths revealing the perfection that Christ attained in his human life and into which he lifts us in his divine power, these constitute the solid food for the perfect. The perfection of Christ, as truth revealed, becomes the perfection of the believer as a life experienced in those who count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of him, our Lord. Let us hold fast the distinction between foundation doctrine and perfection doctrine. There are truths of the beginning of Christ which we have had in the first half of the epistle, his divinity and humanity, his substitution, tasting death for all, and his entering into heaven, as far as that was typified by Aaron. In the second half we have what is needed for the completion of the Christian life the power of the heavenly life as it is secured in the heavenly priesthood and the heavenly sanctuary. Wherefore, let us press on to perfection. Let us press on to perfection. Do take this as a distinct injunction of the God who speaks to us in his Son. Hear his voice. Rest not content with the beginnings. Press on unto perfection, unto the perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Compare Paul, Philippians 3, verses 13 to 15. I press on, if so be I may apprehend that for which I also was apprehended of Christ Jesus. Forgetting the things which are behind, I press on toward the goal. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Let us press on to perfection. End of chapter 44